What up, watch peeps? I have had a few scurfa in my day. In fact, this is my fourth and fifth scurfa. This hobby is so dumb. <laughs> but these are really cool purpose-built dive watches. And when you see them, they look cool and you are going to want one. In fact, if you're only gonna have one grab-and-go quartz watch in your collection, this is a serious contender. So let's get to it. I'm Pete and we are Chillin' With Watches. Wrist check. I am wearing the Fonzie today, which I picked up from Merker. Pretty cool watch. I'll get my review up on this one soon because I did have an issue with it that I was able to resolve myself. Well, we'll get into that in the review video. Today we're here to look at these Scurfa watches. Now, they did they did recently change their packaging. They always came in these kind of cool screw cases, which my understanding is that they uh are cases that he learned about because they're used for parts in i guess that he has used on his you know diving rig or whatever now they have this kind of locking mechanism case which is a little different but a little more convenient so these are 40 millimeter dive watches they come in a multitude of colors you have like blue black there's orange yellow there's even pvd versions of it there are a few different models even, but what I have here today are from the Diver 1 500 lineup, which will, as you will see, comes in both stainless steel and titanium. Now, the titanium version, I think, runs... They don't come on the bracelet. They come on these, which are actually really nice natural rubber straps trying to show you the buckle here and the titanium one does have a titanium buckle but otherwise they are the same and on those straps they go for 270 for this titanium version 250 for the stainless steel version now the bracelets are available as add-on purchases the stainless bracelet i believe went for about 62 bucks the titanium bracelet went for about 80 dollars so there's nothing groundbreaking going on with the design here it's a very familiar submariner looking three o'clock crown guards case that you feel like you've seen it before but it's just done really well the finishing is great it's fully brushed which is something i love especially on a tool watch you have vertical brushing on the case sides as you can see here does have an HE valve. You guys know my feelings on HE valves, but the guy who makes these is a professional saturation diver, so I can kind of let it go on this particular brand. And it does have drilled lugs. The spring bars that come on Scurfa watches are hella dope. If you've never seen these, I showed them in my unboxing, but you'll see how they, no shoulders, but they have a really long end that extends almost all the way through the spring bar you can kind of see how it goes pretty close to flush let's see if i can show it better on the steel well, it's kind of hard to see but let's see if i zoom in if you can see those spring bars come almost all the way to the end of the case so they are really strong stout spring bars one of the things i think is really cool about this now they also have a really nice crown guard shape it, curves up away from the bottom away from your wrist giving easy access to the crown really great bezel action on these it's more you can hear how soft it is it's more ratchety than it is clicky which makes me think it might be a ball bearing mechanism in there and i think up until now both of these watches have been pretty much the same other than one being steel and one being titanium, but the bezel action is a little different. It feels a little tighter on the steel than it does on the titanium. And if you can hear that, the titanium is even a little clickier. I don't know if that is a product of just titanium versus steel or not. Now, the dials are identical as far as i can tell they're both kind of no date with these really cool almost square hour markers that really remind me of the tudor snowflake sub which is one of my favorite watches and probably my favorite watch so you guys can see why i might also be drawn to this one 
The hands are the same shape, but if you'll notice that is one difference here. They are steel on the stainless version, whereas they are all white on the titanium, which for a while I wasn't sure why I felt like the titanium was sportier than the steel, but I think, you know, without realizing it, the difference in the hands is why. Now they both have the same case back, which is pretty neat kind of bead blasted matte finish with their logo in the middle, spec sheet around the outside. Just nothing fancy, but really well done again. Now the bracelets are actually the same in design anyway. And I love the design, you know, to me, I think Jubilee bracelets are the greatest. And this is very close to that. They're fully brushed, just like the case. Again, keeping with that really tool watch kind of look. Now these are not fully articulating. They're kind of faux five link. You'll see that they've been there, but not at that two links in the middle there. We have a familiar clasp that is becoming more popular and I, I hope that trend continues. I wish more brands would use it. Get rid of that safety fold over. I, I find it a little bit unnecessary and a lot of times it doesn't lock down tight. These two push buttons are perfect. It keeps the clasp to be a little more slim, a little less bulky. Inside you have a really nice milled out clasp with a solid scissor part here. Three micros on the clasp. I feel like there is room there for a couple more, but they're kind of small links, so this does work just fine. Now, I think the reason most people buy titanium watches is because they're lighter. And I'm not convinced that there's all that much difference, especially when we're talking about chunky dive watches. So let's clear the desk off, pull the scale out here and weigh these up and maybe compare them to a few other watches and see how much savings and weight you're, we're really talking about. All right, so first up, let's throw the stainless steel version on the scale. What we're looking at here is a not insubstantial 164 grams. And reasonable for this chunky diver on a, you know, an all solid bracelet. What we're looking at compared to the titanium, 110 grams. So it's lighter, yeah, but it's not like it's half as much. It, it's not even... It's not even a third less, to be honest. I don't think it's all that much of a difference. And to put that in perspective, let's see, here's my Maddie, which is stainless steel on a stainless steel bracelet. And that one comes in at, you know, 98, 99 grams. So that is even still lighter than the titanium version of the Scurfa. And I mean, if you're really looking to save in weight, any stainless steel strap watch on a strap is always going to be it's always going to be your lightest option. Now, I don't, I think you really start to realize savings in weight when you get down to kind of field watches on straps in titanium. That's where you're really talking about something that weighs almost nothing on the wrist. Taking a look at the dimensions, like I said, we're looking at a 40 millimeter case, 40.5 at the bezel. I do think it wears larger than 40 millimeters. They come in at 48 millimeters lug to lug and 14.4 millimeters thick. That is including this extremely thick single domed sapphire crystal. And they have 20 millimeter lug widths. All those dimensions are the same for both the titanium and the stainless. Going over some of the other specs, like I just mentioned, really thick single dome sapphire crystal. It uses BGW9 loom, and they run the Ronda 715, which is a gold-plated five-jewel quartz movement, really good quartz movement with end-of-life indicator, all the good stuff. And these D1500s, of course, uh, have 500 meters of water resistance. Now let's take a look at it on wrist. And here is the Scurfa on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. As you can see, I think it does wear slightly bigger than a 40 millimeters, maybe more like a 41, 42 at the most. It is a chunky watch, but it is, uh, it, it's fun, it's robust, and it's still quite comfortable. I really like the bracelet. I do find it, even though it's not fully articulating, to be very comfortable. Let's take a look at it side by side, some other watches. First up, let's look at it next to my Invicta Pro Diver, which is also 40 millimeters. And I think you can see that it wears 
slightly larger than that Invicta Pro Diver. Now the Scurfa does have a small dial, which I think in this comparison is making it look relatively smaller than it wears. But if you were to look at it next to, say, the Black Bay 58, which is a 39 millimeter watch, here I think you can see how the Black Bay definitely looks smaller, definitely wears a lot smaller than the Scurfa, more than that one millimeter that is their true difference. If you're gonna look at it lastly next to an SKX, which is 42 plus, I think it wears maybe not quite as large as the SKX, but we're getting close. Pretty good comparison. All right, lastly, let's take a look at that BGW9 loom. Keep the loom. And there you go, BGW9 loom, never quite as bright as C3 is, but they do a good job of it here with a nice thick application. Pretty cool bright blue loom there on the Scurfa. So there you go, the Scurfa D1500. I'm still not sure which one I'm going to keep. I'm leaning towards the titanium, but not because of the weight, because I like the darker color of the metal. There used to be a D1300 with no HE valve. Those were my favorite. I feel like they were maybe a little less chunky. I kind of wish those would come back. All right, sneaker check. I did get a win on sneakers recently. I picked up the new Jordan 1 bread toe low, and I know what you're thinking, but Pete, those look just like some sneakers you already have. No, bro, they're totally different, and you sound just like my wife. See? Totally different. All right, that's it. I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, please like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.